Welcome to the Judgment Eternal Champions patch walkthrough. This is patch 2.3, uh, third patch since we relaunched the game as Eternal Champions. So uh, my name's Andrew, I'm the game's creator and designer, and uh, we, um, I'm gonna walk through the patch notes for you. There's a big patch, a lot goes in it. So we've actually, we used to do patches every three months, then we did them every six months. So they're actually a lot, uh, they're a lot more in depth. And also we've got a lot more players playing these days, so we get a lot more feedback and more um, better statistics and what's going on. So, yep, I'm gonna walk through it now. It, the patch is live on the 1st of June. So coinciding with this patch, Hall of Eternal Champions will be updated. The cards are gonna go up on drive-through cards. There'll be a Delta pack. That is the difference between patch 2.2 and 2.3. Um, and also we will um, have the Vassal module updated as well. So. It's getting close. We've got another seven or eight days and um, the patch is live. So without further ado, let's walk through the patch notes. Version 2.3 of Judgment Eternal Champions. Essentially, there's some core rule changes that we're making. We don't make these a lot, but sometimes when uh, we feel there's a need to actually rein a whole bunch of things in or it's easier than instead of updating multiple heroes to put a core rule in, we'll do that. So there is a few things we've got for that. Uh, first one is any zero AP attack can no longer execute the push combat maneuver. So this is just cleaning up something where some heroes we didn't want to be able to push on certain situations. Um, you know, we've, we've, we recently brought in, I think the last patch we brought in that dual wield models couldn't push. But then you had things like Brock's backswing could still push and a whole bunch of zero AP off, off cleave you could push off everyone. So now we've got a blanket core rule. If an attack is zero AP, it can no longer do the push combat maneuver. So it's a, essentially a bit of a nerf to a whole bunch of models, um, not just the ones that are, you know, even like Momentum from Yorgoth now, he can't push off his second attack. Uh, Zim Gagak, he's uh, Cone of Cold. I think one of them is a zero attack. So anything that's zero AP attack can no longer push. It's blanket across the board and it's in effect now. We also brought another three versus three rule in just to make, well, three versus three is not caught by surprise, but it's always been a very popular format, but the game is balanced and the heroes are written and balanced for 5v5. Every now and again, we have things that change, you know, like in three versus three now, um, you've got gravity wells, he can't charge the effigy and it's got stealth, so it's, you can't shoot it more than two hexes away. We've got another one now that monsters will always ignore effigies in a three versus three game. They'll never go towards them. They'll never hit them under any circumstances. This is quite um, quite good because there's some maps where if the, the center the center line here a monster was a T4 or anything powerful, and it happened to go towards one person's uh, effigy on the first turn or the second turn, the first communion phase of turn two, it normally meant that person was under the pump. So we're just completely taking it out. We want three versus three to be a fun game. It's the entry for the game, so a lot of new players join, and we don't want to have just pretty poor experiences where they're just getting beaten up by monsters. So, blanket rule, three versus three, monsters can no longer attack effigies. Now, the big one, uh, the effigies in general. <laughs> so, effigy diving is a very important part of the game. There's always been, from the, from the, the, the first day we started designing the game, there's two win conditions, you're picking up souls, you can get souls by killing heroes and by picking them up off the board. So there's two ways you can actually do that win condition, which is really important. And we always try to balance between soul harvesting and, and attacking heroes. The other one is you can do direct damage to the effigy. There are, the more that we can develop the game and the more that we develop heroes with new abilities and new combinations, um, we're, getting, we're seeing a bit more of a tendency to be able to dive at very early levels. So you could maybe have two souls and in a 5v5 game there's still 12 health. And there's a bunch of heroes that could still semi-reliable reliably to blow that effigy up in their activation under certain circumstances. Uh, so what we've done, we've got a blanket, blanket rule now. You can a, a model can only ever attack the effigy with its basic attack weapons and grid damage. So magical artifacts, or if they've got boosts from auras from other heroes like Bastion's um, aura, or they've got a Vorpal Blade or anything like that, they don't count when you're attacking the effigy. Plus one damage from heroism, 
Um, Zonya's plus one damage when she's below seven health. All these instances of boosting damage or boosting your base stats are ignored when that model attacks the effigy. So you still have them and they can still attack the effigy, but it's all base stats. So this is our, our, our thinking here is that we want still to have the, the effigy dive should be a finishing move and it shouldn't be something that you can activate being having two souls and reliably do it in one activation. You can still do it with multiple activations, but it introduces counterplay for your opponent. And it also ensures that, you know, having a souped up superhero that goes in and just blasts it out the face of the earth is no longer, no longer viable. We did this years ago when we stopped active abilities, um, like Rakir's Toxin affecting effigies, because in the, in the start, early part of the game you could. But now we're raining it back one step further. We don't want to have to um, limit our ability to design heroes because we're worried about them blowing up the effigy too early in the game. So that's the rule. So uh, it's pretty it's pretty well written, pretty clear. I've explained it the way it is. You still do get, um, you also don't get the gang up and firing melee penalties do not apply when a models attack an opponent's effigy. So that's the other thing. The, we're not treating like a model anymore. It's a massive structure. So ganging up won't help you and firing in a melee won't, won't hinder you when, when you when you're shooting it. So we're really bringing back effigy damage back to the core fundamental abilities of heroes. Big change, a couple of big changes there, but damn it, this is a big patch, so I did say brace yourself. <laughs> All right, now, artifacts. We've only changed two artifacts in this one. Um, Elixir of Life is converted into an interrupt. It's, it operates the same, it's always operated. We just wanted to bring it in line with the interrupt mechanic in the game, and we've done that a whole, with a whole bunch of heroes as well, so that's not really a change. The Ring of Teleportation, we have now made this the Scroll of Teleportation and it's a one use only item. So you can pick it up for free, once in the game the hero can effigy recall for 1 AP. We like this item, um, we think it's an important part of having strategy in the game to be able to pick it up. We love having choices when you're picking which um, zero fate artifacts you want to pick up, uh, like Gift of the Gods or those kind of ones or Braces of Disruption. We've now made Ring of the Teleportation the same. Um, this item used to be one F every time you wanted to use it, one fate, and no one ever used it. Then we made it, just made it, you could get it and just use it, and now it's being probably used a little bit too much, and it is opening up a little bit too much uh, um, experiences where there's not a lot of counterplay. <clears throat> so it's now one use item. So you can still put it on your Soul Harvester, Soul Gazer, get out there, harvest the soul and get back, uh, or all kinds of things, lasagna, whatever, but it's a one use item. See so the artifact changes? Uh, it's only really changing one, which is Ring of Teleportation. Now the gods. Now for those who don't know, who haven't been playing the game before, Eternal Champions, we, we only introduced gods in Eternal Champions. So one of the big things about the game has been there's no factions, and there still is no factions, but the gods did introduce a uh, quasi-faction type mechanic where you get some bonuses if you get uh, heroes that are aligned to a certain champ, to, to a certain god, which is great. It's been a fantastic addition to the game. We think we're right in the sweet spot of being able to uh, have, <clears throat> you can have a mix of heroes that are champions and not champions, and we see that all the time in competitive play, even at the very top, which is great. But uh, it also means that as we improve or increase the heroes or the game evolves, <clears throat> we also need to tweak the, the gods to make sure that we're not getting into territories where we feel one god or another is too strong or too weak. So we've pretty much touched five of the six gods in this one. I think all of them except for Tauren are getting a tweak. Uh, two of them are getting a pretty big change. The other three are small. Let's go through it. So Bruellen is the first one. Bruellen is an interesting one. Um, the, the existing effigy power where you could uh, charge one AP. We, we, we toned it back. It used to be it could be one AP charge at any time activation. Then we made it one AP charge at the start of activation. We still feel it's too efficient the way it works. It's funnels Bruellen plays into a single uh, play style, which is brute force in your face. It heavily favours some of the champions in Bruellen and gives no benefit to the others, the ones that are um, soul harvesters or, or ranged models, they get nothing out of it. So we, after a lot of different trial and error over the last six months, because it's been on our radar for six months, we've decided to overhaul the way we've actually replaced the Bruellen effigy power. And this is how it works. So Rampage is now, 
Friendly champions of Borellum, uh, friendly champion of Borellum heroes gain plus one mel and unerring accuracy during their activation. They also gain plus two damage to their charge attack. This replaces the existing rampage. So the charging of one AP is completely gone. So you get plus one mel and unerring accuracy. Now the plus one mel still leans into the melee models, which we like because that is Bruellen's play style, but it doesn't completely lock you into that because the unerring accuracy can be used by any model. So any of the shooting models, um, you know, be it Zaffin who's coming out soon or whoever you've got in there that shoots, they can still use unerring accuracy. And plus two damage to the charge attack, once again, it leans into the, the, the melee models, but it's not completely, um, you know, it's not just locking you into, uh, it feels bad if you don't actually use those models. As a result of this, Champion of Brella models can target the Effigy under Rampage now. Now remember, with the core rule change, the plus one mil and plus two damage won't help you in the Effigy, but we're not, so because that rule's in, there's no longer a reason to say you can't charge the Effigy, so you attack the Effigy, so you can. And you can use your unerring accuracy when you're attacking the Effigy. So there is some benefit during the EP, during Rampage of Brellum to attack the Effigy. So that's the big change. <clears throat> so we've completely re replaced Rampage. Everything else, uh, the Warband bonus and the, uh, the, 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 the artifact are the same. It's just the EP has been replaced with that. Plus one Mel, plus two damage on the charge and unerring accuracy. That's it. All right, cool. It's really fun this way. It's actually quite cool. It makes models like Cradle really good as well because on the each effigy power, being a dual wielder, she gets an extra mel and plus two damage to all her attacks. So it really balances out between the Zonyas and the Brocks and Thorgars to the models that um, you know, currently today aren't getting um, so much play in Bruel, which is really cool. So we're really happy with that change. Gruel, this is more of a tweak for Gruel players out there. Gendrus, when she got her avatar bonus, it made her lightning leap 2s to 1j. It actually sometimes was worse because you'd roll a j and s, you know, a j, a manoeuvre and a hit. and Or, sorry, you'd roll a hit and 2s after the, uh, after the avatar bonus and you couldn't leap because you needed a j. So you've made it a j or two symbols. So that's more flexible. So it's a slight improve for her uh, when the avatar, which is the avatar bonus comes in. The other big thing that's actually great for Gruel, we've added clouds, um, smoke, sorry, to forest, rough and treacherous for them to get their bonuses. So that's the, that's for their warband bonus, um, where they get that they heal plus one um, when they activate, and also they need an extra maneuver to push them around, and also during the effigy power when they can't be pushed. So if they're in clouds now, it's the same as being in the forest or smoke. So it increases the opportunity for that to happen, and it will open it up on more maps. Uh, it's been a great change. Uh, as you know, I've been playing Gruul lately in the leagues, and uh, there's a lot of times I'm in a smoke or cloud, I'm like, it, it would be really good. So that's a good, nice nice quality of life change for Gruul. Um, Ista, we are reigning Ista in a little bit. The Celestial Gift, at the moment, the Epiphagy Power removes all um, conditions. It now only removes a single condition. So the model's, model's got two or more conditions on it, and you call it, only one of them, you pick which one, comes off. So in most circumstances, it's going to be the same because usually your model has one, but now there's a bit of counterplay where you can layer conditions onto models, knowing that if they call the EP, they're not just going to blow them all away um, and just ignore it. So that's Ista. Krognar, this is a... Uh, <laughs> Victor's got some other things coming later, but this is a Victor mainly uh, nerf. Uh, summon models cannot target the effigy during the round Shadow Dance is called. So previously, we stopped models who moved with Shadow Dance, they couldn't attack the effigy. So Victor couldn't do it, but he could summon Dorg, and Dorg could do it. So now any summon models on that round can't, can't do it as well. So that's a Krogna. It's not really a nerf, it was kind of slipped through. We never intended it to happen. But Victor, the models that come out in the middle of patches, this is gonna happen sometimes. Thomas, now Thomas is one of my favorites and one, one I was using a lot before I started using Gruel. And we just feel Thomas is a little bit underwhelming during the effigy power. It's very fade intensive. Models like Rakir, like Nephanes and Thomas now, um, and Fazil, you, you, you need fate. Even if you do your one symbol to do the combat maneuver, Rakir still needs a fate for Toxin and might need a reroll. Nephanes still needs a fate, um, you know, and, and Fazil needs it for decap. So what we've done 
And this is something that we're really happy that, that the way that we've done this. So essentially, all the existing rules of Virtuoso are untouched. So you still get the 1S to do your combat maneuvers, all that kind of stuff. But it grants two blessings of Thomas tokens that champions of Thomas can use on the turn the EP is called as fate uh, to execute combat maneuvers or active abilities. So that's it. It's not a, it's not additional fate. You can't use it for rerolls or cleansing or that kind of stuff. You can only use the blessings of Thomas tokens to execute combat maneuvers in Fazil's case or active abilities in Rakia and Nefany's case. Uh, but that's we feel it's it's really good now because even if your fate's low, a lot of the times at Thomas, the board position means it's a great time to call your EP, but you're low on fate and you just think, I'm going to not get anything out of it. So now you're guaranteed to get two things that you can execute and you must use as blessing your tokens to top. Thomas tokens on the turn it's called. If you had the left over you, you lose them. But we found this to be an excellent addition for Thomas. It's a little bit of a tweak for Virtuoso, but it's really helped. So that's the God changes. Big changes to Bruellen and Thomas, and um, slight changes to Istagruel and Krognar, and Torin has stayed where it is uh, the same. Uh, can't wait to see how these goes, but we're really happy. Now remember, this patch is for six months, and uh, it'll go through to the end of the year. Um, which is the, the rest of the tournament season. Right, um, heroes. There's a lot to get through here, so uh, let's go through that now. I'll start alphabetical order, so no particular order other than alphabetical. Ashul. Ashul's a model where he can be, some games, amazing, other games not. Uh, if you're playing against a, a strong player, they normally know how to play around him. If they can engage him or do a bunch of stuff to him that makes it difficult for the Ashul player. So we wanted to improve his opportunity to do things other than get that miracle shot off. Um, so essentially his Mel has been raised from five to six. So it brings him in line with Zaffin. Um, we feel the guys that have, the heroes that have two AP attacks, it's, um, it's, it, it's better, it's good if they have some decent, or semi-decent ability in Mel, um, in, in melee. So we've given him five to six Mel. And his claw damage has increased to two, three, four. So it's the same profile as Zaffin. Uh, and essentially it means he can actually fight as a Mel 6, two, three, four model, which is not terrible. Um, if, if, you know, so you still can get stuff out of him if he's caught in a melee or he's, you know, he's, he's, he can't shoot his gun. Um, Critical Rage has been updated to an, in, innate, an innate interrupt that can be used by spending a fate after the enemies resolve the combat maneuvers. So, Critical Rage is we've copped so much feedback and, and abuse, <laughs> or just, you know, I'll say feedback about Critical Rage being unusable. So we've made it an innate ability now. That's an inter uh, interrupt. So if you pick it at level two or three, it's, it's always on, it's innate. Now when you get hit with a critical attack and your person and the opponent's chosen and has resolved their combat maneuver, you can then execute your combat maneuver from your Critical Rage attack. So you can actually then do your Critical Rage attack and execute combat maneuvers from it. So someone's now shooting you, Ashul, and he gets crit, and he gets resolved, he can then actually shoot back and do combat maneuvers back, which is really good. If he gets charged, and the model completes their combat maneuvers and attack, and it was a crit, he can then hit them with his melee attack, now it's mel six, and push himself away if he wants to. So that's a really big upgrade for Critical Rage, because it was almost never picked. Um, at level two or three, and now it's a viable option. So Ashul got a fairly big boost, uh, so he's definitely a, he's definitely a, a, a buff. Bastion, just time bend is now an interrupt, nothing to worry about. Brock, Heroic Destiny is now an interrupt, no changes there. Um, we've got uh, Haxar is a new release, so he's come out. The only thing we want to talk about here is the Voodoo Idol text was updated from the drive through card, so you can only have two in play at any time. It was missing on the card. It was always the intent. It's always how it used to be. So with Voodoo Idols, you only have two in play at any time. So you can't flood the ball with Voodoo Idols and blow stuff up. So there's that. Um, now, Isabel. So uh, Isabel now, Holy Aura, and no longer benefits demon models as well. Pretty much any of Is Isabel's abilities no longer benefit undead or, or demons. So we're just making it, we, 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 we did it and then Miss Abilities, so her card's completely updated. So Isabel no longer can benefit friendly demon or undead models across the board. Um, 
she's in a really good spot, Isabel. We, we do think she's like, you know, she's up there. She's one of the strongest models. So having um, just removing her effectiveness in certain warband bills is, is important. So that's, that's a good one. Now, Estariel is getting a nerf. Um, so, okay, Isabel's a slight nerf. Ashel's a good buff. Estariel is a, 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 a nerf. So we think Estariel um, is just seeing too much play. She, uh, she compares f quite favorably with every model in her, in her, um, her, her slot, her, her, her role, uh, the ranged aggressor type role. And so we've made some changes to her. So now conflagration, but the other thing about, about Istariel is that there's a lot, of, she combos with a lot of models that cause fire. So the staff of Gruul can now make any model make fire. You've got Infernal from Drogoth can do multiple fires if you position correctly. Alan Deere's got his firebomb. So there's a lot, there's Ashul, there's like a lot of opportunities for her to actually get a massive boost from other models. And we feel it was too much. Um, if you saw an, a, a war band with Drogoth, Alan Deere and her, you pretty much had to ban her because the multiple fire opportunity then in her was really strong. So what we've done now is conflagration, regardless, it only targets a single model during uh, suffering the burn condition. So conflag used to be every model that's burning within eight, or within, sorry, five hexes. It's now only one model. You pick which model you want. If there's model models burning, you pick which one, and only one of them is going to get damaged. The other thing conflagration does now is that it removes the burn condition after she's done it. So this is interesting because... In the past, you could shoot someone, burn them, conflag them, and if they managed to still be alive at the end of activation, you still had to worry about the burn that was still there. So we're saying we're giving her three to five damage from the conflag, but that's essentially the burn damage that the person would have taken. So we're really trying to make conflag a finishing move, um, which is what it is. Now with her, you can reapply it afterwards. So if you start the turn with someone burning, you can do conflag, which will remove the burn, and then she can attack the model to reapply the burn. She can't do conflag again, but in that instance, burn will stay on. So there's a little bit of uh, nuance now how you how you attack with a star rule. Um, but it is conflag overall. You'd say, it, I mean, in the absence of other heroes that help, it's it's much the same. Although it's removing the burn is is a nerf, but it is a big nerf overall for conflag. But we think it's warranted. Blaze is another another one. We've reduced the distance of Blaze from three hexes to two. We love Blaze. We love the fact that she can do it. It is meant to get her out of a bind, get her away from uh, a melee scrum or being engaged. But three, we we're finding that three meant it was being used aggressively a lot to jump over things and shoot. So it's now we've just turned that down a little bit. So it's two big changes for Astario. Kane is the next one. Um, we felt Soothe was a really cool ability for Kane that wasn't getting a lot of action and we thought it was just a bit awkward to use because it was only on his magic attack. So now Soothe can be triggered by both Ritual Sword and Blood Magic, but the healing is now affixed too. Before it was only his range, his magic attack, but you could heal whatever damage you did, uh, which could be amazing, but it just didn't get used a lot. So now he's really versatile where he can actually uh, do it on his sword as well, as well as his Blood Magic. But... It only, it's capped at two, the healing is to fix two. So really cool for Kane. Laurie Bella. Laurie Bella is one that hit the scene pretty hard um, and she was really good. Uh, we, we, we feel like she's amazing in her slot, what she does. We just felt that the hand grenade was a little bit oppressive. Um, it's a signature ability. We don't want to move that or change the way it works, but we are reducing the range from four to three. So essentially, she needs to place it three hexes away, not four. Now, sometimes these things, uh, there are nuance of converting distances to hexes. And the way that that worked, um, yeah, it was meant to be able to target things the same range as her range attack, which is four hexes. But when you place it in the fourth hex, you could actually hit something that was in the five hexes away. And we'd never intended that. So now it's three. So essentially, her... Her, her threat range is four hexes from her gun and, and, fr and from that. Um, the other thing is she now needs to be able to see the hex. 
this was something, something that didn't happen a lot, but me even using her in the last um, league, I was popping it over forests and popping it over like things I couldn't see, and it just felt wrong. So essentially, she needs to be able to see where she's throwing the grenade. So you have to target the hex. So it's not going to happen a lot, but it is it is a change. So Laurie's been toned back a little bit with the hand grenade. Uh, Marcus, the wall was, I think his wall was completely within and, and Gendrus' forest was within. We've now uniformed, made them the same. So his wall is now within three hexes instead of completely within four. So I think there's some instances where it could be better and others where it's worse, but overall it's the same. It's not really a nerf. It's just, just a, a making sure that he feels the same as Gendrus with her forest. So that's Marcus's wall. Miss Susie, right. Now, Miss Susie was, uh, yeah, very strong in the meta for a little while and kind of fell off more recently when people started working out how to play against him more. Uh, but we have got, uh, we, we're very careful not having recency bias. Like, obviously, the meta, it's not massive and we do have trends that people start using certain things and it's, everyone gets hyped. And so, but we, we, we uh, when, when, when Ms. Susie was quite strong in the meta, um, we felt he needed a tone down. And what we've done is two things. So Viper Shot, we've removed the extra damage you get when you have a J in your combat maneuver. So it used to be 2S to do poison. If you've got a J, extra damage, extra damage is taken off. So it just brings him back a little bit from being too good as a ranged uh, soul gazer. And Decay, which is a really powerful ability of removing either two move or two agi, um, is now an action and a fate. It used to be just a fate. It was too efficient. It was too AP efficient before. So now we've done that a little bit better as well, which is great. Right. I'm getting through them. Still a few big ones to go. I hope you're enjoying it so far. And <laughs> not dying. I hope I'm not getting flamed. All right. Uh, on Kura. On Kura is an interesting one. Um, not a meta favorite. I had a lot of success using her in Thomas, uh, but it really highlighted a couple of things that I felt he as she needed as a quality of life. So we've done the following. Weakening Blow and Contagion, which were two separate abilities before, are now combined in a new ability called Bane, um, which can inflict both Weaken on a 2S combat maneuver and Contagion if a J is rolled. So it really ramps up that charge attack where if you roll 2S and a J, you can weaken someone, which takes one off their strength for the next activation, and Contagion, um, which is like, does it, it's, it's a debuff as well. So essentially now you can apply both with one attack if you roll really well. So we're really happy with that. The Bell of Doom is the signature um, ability for Okura. It was kind of a bit awkward. It was expensive to put out, easy to get rid of. So we've balanced that out a little bit. So the cost has been increased to 1 AP and 1 F. Um, it used to be just 1 F. But it now costs 1 AP and 1 F to get rid of it, where it used to be 1 AP. So we've met halfway. We made it more expensive for Okura to put it out. But a 1 AP, 1 F investment, 1 F investment to get rid of it is quite substantial. So that now there's like a lot more balance between that. So Bell of Doom's different. Um, Sunder Armor is now available on Kura at level one. It used to be just an upgrade. So now she's got it at level one. It's available. And expires at the end of the target model's activation. So you can just reduce one of their armor for one AP straight away from level one. So really useful level one now on Kura as well. So with Onkura now um, losing Sunder Armor as a level up option, we've replaced it with a new ability called Ring the Bell. So we're doubling down on her signature uh, Bell of Doom. So essentially, when, if Ring the Bell is out in, on the field, Onkura with Ring the Bell can spend one fate and any models within two hexes of the bell suffer D3 damage. So it's a really cool ability. It gives a bit more sting to the bell. Uh, it makes it more worthwhile putting it out there. So. Uh, Really happy with that. So Onkura pretty much gets a, uh, a fair, fair good, fairly good buff out of this. Can't wait to see her more on the battlefield. Um, yeah, so she's, uh, she's going to be great. Right, um, Piper um, is another great hero that sits in a good spot. Very happy with him. Um, we have, because when Victor came out, we had these shenanigans going on with Taunt, and we're going to get to Victor soon, but essentially Algrath would taunt someone and then run away behind or do whatever. We're kind of removing that out of the game. So Piper's Taunt is the same. So when Piper casts Taunt, after he casts it, he cannot 
advance or charge after casting it. All right, so he essentially casts it and he's where he is. Um, and if he, but, but if he dies during the model's activation, then the taunt expires. The way it was worded before, if Algarath or Piper taunted you, and you actually kill them, they're, let's say they're on one wound, and you kill them with your first attack, you still weren't able to attack anyone else. But now, we've specifically said, if the taunted model dies, then you're no longer taunted. So that's just a bit of a quality of life thing. Um, also, when he's taunted someone, previous versions of taunt expire. So there was a, a nuance around activations across turns where you could actually have two people taunted, but that's 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 off now. Um, and the taunt range has been reduced from four to three. So Piper, just all about taunt. We're just bringing it back a little bit. You don't see a lot with Piper at level three. I have cast it in the last league and it was actually quite effective, but you don't see a lot of people doing that. But it's big with Algarath, so um, we've, 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 we've nerfed Taunt there. Skull. Now, Skull is an interesting hero. We've been a lot of play testing on him this patch cycle. Um, tried a whole bunch of things out, but in the end, um, we've come up with a really good place for Skull. We basically wanted to improve his ability to be a defender, essentially. Um, so with the two heads... Uh, innate ability he has at the moment it means you can't be uh, you don't get plus one dice when you're parting blow him we've also improved that so skull never suffers from gang ups this is pretty good now because you want the defenders to be in the scrum not not afraid get especially someone like skull right isn't is an Ayrton two-headed orc runs in there you want him to be amongst it but with his agi three and res one he wasn't you know, you can bring him down. So now, the fact you can't gang up on him is a really uh, really good addition to two heads. That's great. He gains a new ability called Watch Out. Essentially, it's an interrupt against that grants plus one Agi and immunity to gang up to a friendly non-defender model within two hit hexes for a single attack. So, th so this is an interrupt. So basically, um, if it's in play, he um, he can interrupt an attack that, that, that a model gets, like Thrummel and Donrigar do. And he gives them plus one agi, so the person, the attacker will lose a dice, essentially. And they also immune to gang ups. So he's very good at, he's now a good counter for the melee scrum, the, you know, the death ball kind of play. And for maps where you, you're huddling around and fighting in tight confines, Skull's now a really good defender for that. Um, Mystic Shield used to be 1 AP, but now it's 1 AP or 1 F. We're finding abilities that are 1 AP or 1 F are really versatile, effective, and they're very dynamic in the game. And so uh, that's what Mystic Shield is now as well. Um, and essentially that's it for Skull. So extra ability to defend people. He's got a lot more resilience when he's fighting in melee scrums. He's still susceptible to ranged attacks and that's fine. We want models to have counters and things like that. But he plays into some uh, warband styles really well. Um, and so we're really happy with Skull there as well. Um, Styx. Styx is another hero that's quite uh, versatile, can be annoying, awesome model, uh, really plays into a, a niche uh, space, but we feel he does it a bit too well. The thing about Styx is you can do some really crazy things with him, and we felt the, the one res made him a little bit too safe to do that. We wanted to make it less safe to do some of the cool stuff that Styx does. So we've taken away his res. So he's now res zero um, instead of res one. And the astral split is a really strong ability that lets him swap places with someone from four hexes away. We've now made that three. We've just reduced it a bit. Once again, um, it was he was able to do it from positions of safety. And now we're saying, well, you need to get a, you need to be you know closer. So you either start closer to the model you're swapping with, which means you put yourself in danger previously, or you need to spend an action to get that closer and then split and then one action left. So we're kind of thinking that's a good change for sticks. That's a bit of a nerf for sticks. So we've got a buff for Ankura, a slight nerf for Piper, buff for Skull, nerf, slight nerf, I'll nah, we'll say a nerf for sticks. Victor, okay, little man. <laughs> Uh, once again, awesome model uh, to balance a little really weak model that can have such a punch with his demons. It's a true warlock kind of uh, kind of theme. We really enjoy the way that he plays. Probably does it a bit too too well. So so 
He now, if he's used soul step, so his ability to, to place at a soul, he can't cast demon gate at that point. So he can't do that, then summon uh, a, a dog, and then smash face. Like You need to now think about how you're going to use him. That soul step originally... The intention, we don't like to say intent because we like people to explore and do things, but it was an escape mechanism for him. It became a really aggressive ability for him. And so we've just, particularly when it's paired with Krognar's Warband bonus of being able to, uh, he could soul step to a soul, summon door, wreck someone's face or the effigy, and then effigy recall back. So we just want to just reduce some of his amazing <laughs> activations he can have. That's Victor. Um, your Goth, another great model, uh, sits in a very interesting space. He's um, very different, a lot more versatile than Thorgar. Doesn't have the damage output, but can do it a lot with momentum. Um, we felt that level three uh, critical strike combined with momentum was too strong. That means you could hit a model every um, every solar becomes a crit which then lets you do momentum and do it again and so it was just he at level three he was just two models would just get destroyed so essentially now momentum no longer benefits from critical strike so if you use critical strike to get that crit you can't then get momentum from that you can only do momentum if you actually do a legitimate um a legitimate crit so that's that one uh okay that's it for heroes so your goth has got a slight nerf um, at level three, so otherwise his kit's the same. Victor's got a pretty, you know, you got a nerf, sticks nerf, skull buff, Piper nerf on Kura buff, uh, Staryl nerf, Laura Bella nerf, Kane buff. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty good. We're really happy. Touched a lot of heroes, but we said that um, there are going to be other cards changed. I didn't go through all the cards because some of them are just like quality of life changes to interrupts, or you know, we've rewritten some things to be more clear. So the the pack of card changes will be quite quite large, but as we said, it's going to be on the Hall of Eternal Champions in the Vassal module, um, and available for downloading PDFs off the CreatureCast website as well, if that's what you want to do. Right, monsters, two monsters. Algrath now has Pathfinder. He, he, uh, he was always meant to, but we didn't put it on his on his uh, card, so he has a Pathfinder. Now Taunt changed as well on Algrath the monster we're talking about now. If Algrath dies, Taunt goes away. So if you kill Algrath during your activation, you can still then attack something else. That's good. Gloom's move has been changed from D2 to D3. Uh, brings it one with Algrath. We like the T1 models to be a little bit more dynamic. So they both got D3 move now instead of D2. So Gloom moves a little bit faster. That's it there. Now in the summons, this is where Uncle Victor's getting a little bit of a hit. So at the moment, Victor's, the only thing Victor's really had, it has... When he soul steps, he can't demon gate. But there's uh, Algrath himself. Now, when you a summoned Algrath that's killed grants one fate to the opponent. Before it did nothing. Um, his health has been dropped from eight to seven. This is a little nuance because a normal model that's not a melee aggressor can do a crit for four and a solid for three. Before they need to do two crits to kill Algrath, we're now making it a crit and a solid. So it's seven damage instead of. So seven health instead of eight. Um, and otherwise, the taunt change applies for Algrath as well. So the main change for summons is it's one fate and your opponent kills Algrath. And his health is now seven instead of eight. Dorga Khan, we, we're, we are hammering, well, we're, we're, we're nerfing the summon Dorg. Um, Mel goes from eight to seven. Demon Blade damage is now three, four, five. Um, he can't be summoned in three versus three games, Dorga Khan. And the cost is now 2 AP and 1 F. So we felt that when Victor came out, um, we, as a playtest team, missed the boat a bit with him. And we do apologise. Uh, we're normally very good. It's just that he was a really complicated model to get right. And because he, he landed at a, in the middle of a patch cycle, it caught us out a little bit. But... Uh, we feel with these changes, he's still great to play, plays the same role. But as a Victor player, you've got to really think about your choices now. You can't just throw Algarafs out there willy-nilly because you've got to give away fate if you do that. Um, and Dorg now doesn't hit like, like an absolute freight train. 
the monster. We're happy the way it hits like a freight train, uh, but we didn't want Vic to be able to do that. So we've really just hand back the door cunt. It's still a great model. Still got Mel 7, 3, 4, 5 damage grid. Um, you know, but you can't do it three versus three games. And he costs two AP and I have to bring him out. So that's uh, that's door cunt. So that's the monsters. So Victor's got a, you know, a, a, a sizable nerf, but we really feel, and we've been playing him in our play test leagues and things like that. He's uh, still got a strong place. Uh, he's just not as um, not as just dominant as, as he could be under his previous gaze. We've done a couple of map changes and I'll pop them up on the screen. So basically map four from three, three versus three has been overhauled to be a lot more friendly. Um, it wasn't, it was used at Adepticon. It wasn't a great map for three versus three. So we've made some changes to that just to make it better. So I hope you like it. Uh, map six um, for five versus five has popped up as well. That's also changed. We've, we've rotated the, 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 the the teleportation gates so that the top one doesn't give cover to the monster essentially was the main reason for that we also move the the, the center soul pit out there was you know opportunities for the lot that the, the, the player at the bottom of the, of the map to if it, the soul spawns in their one first and then spawn in the middle they can actually dominate that area of the battlefield and get a bit of advantage it's now moved out so it's much more difficult to do that and there's now a monster a T1 and 4 monster, we've moved that in, so it actually disrupts that as well. Um, played some games on this map and it's really good with the new changes, that's great. Uh, map 7 has also changed, I'm popping that up. This one was a single soul pit map, it's now a two soul pit map, but they're very close together. We believe, and from our experience, it's providing the same um, play style we wanted with having a single soul pit map, but it's not so brutal if one warband is just dominating the pit and picking up souls every turn because now they're, they're close but they're, they're, it's a lot more difficult to dominate that bigger that bigger space and if you're doing that you deserve to be doing winning it anyway so we've made a couple of tweaks to the maps so they're the official tournament maps that will rotate in um it's map six and map seven of the 5v5 and it's map four of the three versus three so that's it that's patch 2v2.3 two, two v of Judgment Eternal Champions. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are. Let us know on the Discord what your thoughts are. I'm sure you're going to anyway. I can't wait to hear Kenny and the KC guys, uh, KC and the Sunshine Band, can't wait to hear what their thoughts are. They've been um, really good. Like, you know, I know there's been a lot of discussion around uh, the way that, you know, that on the podcast, they're always talking about they have a game and something goes crazy and they talk about it. But we love it. We're getting a lot of, it's generating a lot of discussion. Um, some of these changes have been directly from their feedback and others. We do listen, as you know, me and Jeff, the two game designers, are very active in the community. We play in all the leagues. We're in Discord every day. Um, the play test team, you know, Robbie, Sonny, uh, Dave, we, we, they're all on there as well. So we um, and Gamer Dad. So we are, uh, we do listen, uh, but we all also, you know, we have to filter out the things that we think are just knee jerks or things that we think well. You know that's actually not the case there is counter play there and a, a lot of my crusading in, in the leagues to show that things can work that people don't think can work or off meta things and, and i've had a bit of success doing that so that's the beauty of the game we encourage people to explore uh if they find something they feel is too strong explore uh you know left field models and play styles to get around it because that's how the game is designed we purposefully put these things into heroes um as that to, to actually, you know, shift the meta different ways. Um, I mean, you know, it's not, you're not always going to get 100% right. You know, we've made a change to about half a dozen heroes in this, but we're seeing at 40 heroes now, so it's a really exciting, dynamic um, environment to play the game in, and we're, we're loving it. Uh, and, uh, you know, after eight years since I started designing the game, um, almost not, I guess nine years now, I'm still really loving the game. I, I, I look forward to playing every game at the chance I can, so... Hope you are too. So thanks very much. Let us know in the comments and on Discord what you think. And uh, let's go nuts. The next six months are going to be super exciting. It's some big tournaments. It's going to have first, we're going to lead up into our first um, invitational at LVO at Las Vegas Open next year, which we can't wait for. So let's do it. And uh, we'll speak to you guys soon. And uh, peace. <laughs>